So today at the shop, I thought I'd talk about a hard drive repair for a newer iMac. So this iMac here is a uh, 2015, and it's the uh, slimline you can see right here. When we boot it up, what it does is the uh, pinwheel just spins and spins and spins. We've run the um, disk utility on it, which indicates there's a failure of the hard drive. And um, so it's a few years old. Uh, we just thought we'd go ahead and do the upgrade to it, and then we will uh, reinstall Mac OS, and <clears throat> it should fix the problem. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use the solid state drive. Um, I don't think that there is a solid state drive in here right now. Uh, pretty sure it's just a conventional HD. Uh, the problem with these newer Macs is this um, right here is glued in. And so the only way to um, take that apart on an iMac is with a uh, what we call a little pizza cutter tool and I'll show you uh, what that is momentarily. So here is the pizza cutter tool. You can kind of see it. Actually has this end here that uh, turns. Uh, I got this from uh, the good folks at iFixit. I don't know if you can see that or not. But what we'll do is we take this and we stick it in here and we roll this all the way up. We work it all the way around and that will loosen the glass. We take the glass off and then uh, we'll, we're able to put this in. All right, let's see what we got here. We're gonna start down here, we're gonna push it in. As you can see, I push it in and we're gonna roll it up like this. You have to keep working it, come up and down. I feel like I'm on a cooking show. So, okay, I think I got it all the way in on that end. We're gonna roll it around this way. You can see that around the top. this around. We're going to come all the way around like this. Now the older iMacs that are thicker, the glass is actually magnetic and you can um, use a suction tool and pull that right off. It's actually pretty cool. Uh, seems like as Apple has redesigned certain um, iMacs and Macs and so forth, they've made it harder and harder to work on. Okay, now, now that we've got this apart, we can get our fingers in there, like this, and we can pull this apart. So that's what we'll do right now, and we'll be real careful. We're gonna pull this down. Now, let me show you the inside of this. You wanna be careful not to um, jerk any of those video cables. We're gonna disconnect those, and then we'll be able to uh, have room to get into the glass. All right, let me put some light in there, and you can see that there, okay. Let's set this over here. All right, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the other end of this tool and get up underneath. There's a little clip underneath there. You gotta be real careful when you loosen these wires. It's kind of hard to see. But I got this one. And we're gonna gently pull that out. Oh, also, I failed to mention, um, you really should make sure you have this unplugged before you do this because the capacitors of the um, power supply hold a charge and um, getting zapped can be uncomfortable. Okay, I adjusted my camera so you can see in a little bit better. Here's one more. Uh, we're going to carefully pull that out. Now we can take this glass. It's glued around the bottom a little bit, so we're going to loosen it. On the bottom, we're going to run this tool across the bottom a little bit. We're going to loosen this very carefully. If you lay it down, it eventually pulls loose. Take the same tool and cut in here. Okay, now what we can do is we really don't have to take the whole glass off, we can just lay it down. So we're gonna carefully do that. And then I'll readjust the camera and I'll show you, there's the hard drive right there. So that is a regular conventional hard drive. And what we're gonna use is this solid state drive, 500 gig solid state drive by Western Digital. Uh, picked up at Best Buy, under 100 bucks. and. Um, 
think that will make this thing run a lot faster. Okay, now we're going to take out the hard drive. This is a Torx bit. It's a T9 Torx. Uh, we can loosen this up, make sure you don't lose these screws. Let's take the brackets out there. so you can see this better. Just make sure you um, know how to put the screws back in. Okay, now here's the best part of the video, unboxing. I love unboxing new stuff, although this is kind of a boring thing. Look at that, the light's much better when we turn it off. Hard drive or solid state drive. It says here to remove this label before we install it. So I'm gonna use a little razor knife and get behind that sticker. Oh, isn't that cute? They protect the gold leads. Must be a new thing they're doing. Okay, we're gonna set this down here and come back to this in just a second. Okay, now the regular hard drive should pop right out. It's got these rubber grommets around it that hold it a little sticky. I'm gonna pull this out. Take this off. Let me adjust this a little bit better. There we go. All right, now we Hold. Oops, kind of hard to see. Let's see here. Okay, and there's the original hard drive. And what we're going to do is we're going to put in the solid state, as you can see, has the same connectors. And it's a lot lighter, too. Okay. So you got to slide that connector. Okay, so now there's the solid state, it's connected in. You can see kind of right there, whoops, right there, the, the SATA data and the SATA power connector. Um, next thing we need to do is put these little grommets back on to fill up the space. It'll allow it to set in here. So basically there's a, it's just a laptop hard drive inside this iMac, this newer iMac. Okay, and there you have it. Now you have that. We're gonna put these in here. Whoops, popped off. We've got some sticky stuff on it, which helps line it up, which is pretty nice. Okay, now we have to put these brackets back on and we'll be back in business, almost. I think this goes here like this. If you have any questions on doing something like this, just please call our shop. We can, uh, we'd love to do it for you, uh, but we do love to educate and um, explain things in a simple matter so you understand it. But at the end of the day, we are, you know, in business here for service work. So we would love to uh, do it for you. Okay, so normally I would take this iMac um, outside. We have a little station with the air compressor to blow out the dust, but it's pretty rainy today and I don't want to do that. So I've got this. Uh, can compressed air so you can see down in there the fan is just really clogged up so we're gonna blow that out and um, watch our face we do that
normally I would hit that with a little bit more air, but again, it's blowing right up on my face, so I don't wanna, don't wanna do that. Okay, now we've gotta put the screen back on, but if you remember, we cut the adhesive. So all the way around, let's do it over here, around this edge here, and all the way up here, and of course the other side, we need to reapply some adhesive. Now I've got this um, double-sided adhesive, you can get it on Amazon. Uh, this is about uh, five centimeters wide, and it's sticky on one side, and what we do is we put it down and pull it, and then we take the uh, backing off, and then we press the glass in. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this on now. This is probably where we're gonna speed up the video. Maybe not. Anyway, we're gonna put a piece on there like that. Uh, let me take my knife, let me cut, cut that off. side here hopefully I'm not cutting off the camera okay and then that little piece right there right there we will snip take off that backing and use a little razor knife just to get underneath kind of lift it up Whoop, make sure that the actual adhesive stays on there we go so you can see the uh, adhesive right there maybe you can see that dark and so we're gonna peel this off we're gonna repeat down here just pick it and then pull this off again make sure that adhesive stays on there all along there Along that edge, pull this, and we're gonna pull that up there. Okay, some of that popped off, there we go. Okay, so now we have the adhesive all the way along here. You can kind of see that it's shiny, the new adhesive, and up to there. So the next step is to put the glass back on. Okay, so the next step is to reconnect the LCD panel and reattach the glass. So what we're gonna do is lift this up and then these are the connectors here. Be very careful when you put them back in. Um, you have to actually line them up very carefully. And then flip this little lock lever down. And the next one is this connector. Hopefully you can see that. And we're gonna slide that into side. Pull some light over here. Okay, it's in. Okay, both connectors are in. Now we're going to take this glass and we're going to push it up and go all the way around. And that ends part one of replacing or upgrading this iMac 2015 with a solid state drive. Part two is gonna actually be to reinstall the operating system and we'll do that in just a second. Okay, now that we've installed the um, upgraded solid state in the iMac, um, it's no good until we reinstall the operating system because this is a brand new solid state drive. There's no operating system on it at all. So if we were to turn it on, let me show you here. You get the dreaded blinking folder with a question mark in there. Um, so if you ever get that on your Mac, uh, basically your hard drive probably crashed and we need to do this procedure. Uh, but what I'm gonna do is I've got the latest version of Mac OS um, that I've downloaded and created this little flash drive installer. Uh, I'll save this for another video to show you how to do this, but you have to get a copy of the Mac OS operating system in an installable format. Uh, this iMac does not have a CD DVD drive, it only has USB, so you've got to create a USB bootable operating system installer. 
The other caveat is not all versions of Mac OS can be installed on all Macs. We'll save that for another discussion. But I know that the Mac OS Catalina 1015, 10.15 will run on a uh, 2015 iMac. So if I plug this in now, it will switch right over and recognize it and start the installation process. But normally what I do is I go ahead and plug in the flash drive first with it powered off. I'll show you that. So on the back here, just take this flash drive and plug it in here. Then on the keyboard, you gotta love my ghetto keyboard here. On the keyboard, I hold the Alt key down when I power it on. And there's a lot of keystrokes you can do with Mac um, for diagnostic and troubleshooting with uh, by holding down the keys when you turn it on. But today we're just gonna talk about the Alt key. So what I'm going to do is I am going to hold this key down and I want to turn it on. You're going to hear the chime. And then what it will do is it will start scanning for bootable devices. Now remember, we've got the flash drive plugged in, so it'll see that. And there it is. It comes up, it says install Mac OS Catalina, and then we can choose our network. So the first thing we're going to do is come down here and we're going to pick a Wi-Fi network that's in my shop. passcode and connect to it and it comes right back to the same screen uh, the next thing we're gonna do let me move this in a little bit closer so you can see this hey there we go all right so what we'll do is we will click the arrow to continue you know one thing I just noticed was that there's smudge fingerprints all over this glass so I'm gonna use a micro cloth and turn this off there we go and we're gonna wipe down this glass to make it look a little bit nicer. Okay, so once the um, so the flash drive boots up, you're going to get this screen here. It says Mac OS Utilities. What we need to do before we can install the operating system is we need to partition the hard drive. And so partitioning is kind of like putting a fence around it. If you were to buy, say, 100 acres and you wanted to raise um, some type of cattle on half of the land and another type of cattle on the other half of the land and you wanted to keep them separated, you might put a fence around 50 acres and just have those type of cattle in there and then have a fence around the other half, uh, the other 50 acres and have a different type of cattle there. Same principle with partitioning, but we're gonna put a fence around the entire hard drive and the cattle we're raising is the Mac OS operating system, if that makes sense. Okay, so what we wanna do is we wanna pick disk utility and it shows over here that there is um, three, there's internal, external, and disk images, okay? So the only thing we need to be concerned with is the, um, is the internal. This is the one, this is the drive we just installed. Now I previously partitioned this drive off camera and you didn't see that, I uh, wanted to test it. So that's why it's showing up right now and it already has the, uh, the Mac OS on it. But normally this would not be here. It would show internal, but it would just be blank. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're going to repartition it. We're gonna click on the name of the drive, which is the internal. We're gonna come over here and click erase. Um, the name is gonna be Mac OS and the format is gonna be APFS, which is the Apple file system. Um, you might have a couple of other options, but on a solid state drive, uh, you want to use the APFS format. It's much more efficient for solid state drives. Again, maybe in a future video, I'll go through the different partition types and so forth. Uh, there's partition types for Windows, there's partition types for Linux, there's partition types for uh, Mac. But for what we're doing, solid state drive, Mac operating system, uh, um, 10.15, Catalina, we're gonna use APFS. So name, Mac OS, format, APFS. We click erase and it comes up, does its thing, boom, done. Got a green check there you can read down through the options if you're really curious but basically you just click done and now we have a partitioned hard drive so now we need to get back to the previous screen we're going to close this and we're right back here to the mac os utilities now we can pick install mac os and click continue now we're going to get the first screen it says um, to set up the installation of mac os catalina click continue little license agreement that nobody ever reads. So we'll click agree. Oh, one more, are you sure? Yes, agree. OK, 
Okay, now it comes up and wants to know where to install the um, operating system. Well, we want to install it right here. This is our new solid state drive that's 500 gig and um, this is, it says 499.9 gigabyte. Uh, remember, it's never exactly 500 gig. It's going to be a little bit less than that because of the space the system uses up. Uh, again, that's, we can talk about that in a future video, but right now we're just going to select that up drive. We're going to click install and then we sit back and wait. Uh, it says about three minutes remaining. Uh, no, it'll take about 30, but um, we'll um, stop the video now and come back to it as soon as it comes back to the next screen. So I just thought I would come back and check on the status here. Now it says four minutes and it's actually been about 10 minutes. So basically we just have to sit back and wait and when it rolls to the next screen, I'll resume the video and we'll continue installing Mac OS Catalina. Okay, quick checkup on the uh, iMac on the status. Uh, it got past that phase and now it's rebooting and we have the Apple logo on the screen and a status bar going across the bottom. So let's be patient and hopefully we'll be at the screen where we can continue here shortly. Okay, moving right along. We finally got to the initial welcome screen. This took about 30 minutes. Uh, we're gonna pick our country, the United States, and click continue. And we are going to click continue again. This is the um, select your Wi-Fi screen. So we're gonna go ahead and pick my Wi-Fi. We fix stupid computers. We fix stupidcomputers.com. And agree to the data and privacy screen. Okay, so now we're at a screen where it says transfer information to this Mac. What you can do, if this is a brand new system, you just leave this as don't transfer any information and you click continue. And then what will happen is you can set it up as a new user, which is what we're gonna do right now. Now, technically I need to transfer data. So what I do sometimes and what I could do is I could click right here from a Mac, Time Machine, or Backup or Startup Disk. And then what I can do, if I zoom out, I can take the original hard drive and this adapter. This is a SATA adapter to USB. And what we can do is we can plug that together and then plug this in the USB in the back. Then what we can do, coming back up here so you can see the screen, I can select from a Mac Time Machine backup and hit continue. The system will recognize this plugged in and then it'll step you through transferring all of the data. Okay, but I don't want to do that right now. I'll come back later. That process is called Migration Assistant and it's integrated with the installation. I can always run Migration Assistant at the end uh, once we're finished and I'll do another video on that at some point. But for right now, just to get through this, let's go ahead and select Don't Transfer Any Information Right Now and click Continue. Um, sign in with your Apple ID. Uh, okay, so what this does is if you have an Apple ID, it will hook your system directly into your uh, into the Apple ID to help you quickly download things from the store and so forth. Um, a lot of the vendors are doing that now. Windows does that. Apple does this. Um, but I still like the old school way of just having a user ID on the system, on this system directly, and then coming back later and setting up the Apple ID. I don't like integrating the entire system with it. Uh, so what I'm going to do is, uh, right now I'm just going to say set up later, skip. Again, you can always come back in later through the system settings and add your Apple ID through the iCloud account. It'll work just fine. Uh, I just, again, I just don't like my Mac to log into Apple at the same time I'm logging into the Mac. All right, we're going to hit agree again on the license agreement agree one more time, and then create a computer account. Now typically what I do is I just type in a name here. I'm just gonna type in owner, and tab down, it puts owner right there. Password, I'm just gonna type in password. I know that's a terrible password to have, but it's just an initial password. Once I give this device, this iMac back to the customer, they can change the password for whatever they want. Um, right here is a little icon if you don't like the electric guitar, which is kind of cool. But you can change, you can click on defaults and come down here and pick whatever you want. So like for example, I'll just pick a zebra for the heck of it and hit save. And now um, this person's login icon is a zebra. 
Hopefully they uh, like zebras. I'm gonna hit continue. And down here it says it's creating, creating the account. Uh, Express setup, the features below will set you up and you can customize the settings yourself or you can customize the settings yourself. I am just going to let these remain the same. Um, you can read each one of these uh, and decide whether you want it to do it automatically or not. Uh, Apple's very secure. Uh, so I just go ahead and let it take the defaults. I don't really let it bother me. Uh, analytics. Um, I usually like to go ahead and share crash and usage data with the app developers because again, if the Mac uh, application crashes, it'll send the um, crash data to the developers and they can help improve it, make some bug fixes. So that doesn't bother me. I'm gonna click continue. Uh, screen time, we will set up later. Uh, if you wanna know what screen time is, just Google it. It's a new thing by Apple to give you a report of how much time and what you do on the computer. All right, um, this is pretty cool. This is the new look for um, Catalina. You have the light look, you have the dark look, or you have the auto look. So it's kind of interesting because Windows has always kind of been dark and now they're going back to a light mode. Apple has always been light and they're going to a dark mode. A lot of the, your mobile phones uh, go to a dark mode, which is what uh, Android had for the longest time. If you set, I, I like the dark mode. I usually just set it for this, um, but this is for a customer that is used to the Apple computer for years. And so I don't know whether they're gonna like this or not. So I'm just gonna leave it at light. By the way, if you set it to auto, then it will go um, switch between light and dark depending on the time you set or the sunrise and the sunset. So that's, that's pretty cool too. All right, we're gonna go ahead and click continue. And then we get the screen, setting up your Mac. Check, check, check. All right, give it just a minute and it'll continue on to the uh, final screen. And the final screen we have it is the desktop. Let me zoom back out a little bit and voila. We have the uh, Mac OS Catalina screen, okay? Uh, one final note I always do, um, we can go through training of Mac OS and Catalina later. Uh, that's not the purpose of this video. But one final thing I do is I always check for updates. So if you come up here and click on the Apple and click about this Mac, over here, you can see there is an option for a software update. I click on that just to see if there's an update. And I think there is, yes, uh, there is a Mac OS Catalina 10.15.4 update. Um, now one note about this, uh, I don't check automatically keep my Mac up to date because I hate it doing something out of my control and then I come back the next day and I don't know what happened. So I always do the updates, but I do them myself and I know when they're being uh, installed and that way if something screws up, I can always come back and uh, back the update out. Okay, so I'm going to install right now the 10.15.4 update, click okay, or not okay, update now. And then right here, download and restart. And as you can see, it's starting to download and it says about 15 minutes. So I'm gonna stop the video now. Uh, I hope you enjoy this. Um, for uh, sake of purpose, uh, we've achieved our goal here. And if you have any questions, um, you can always email me at um, help at linlinks.com or you can go to our website, wefixstupidcomputers.com and send us a message. We're on Facebook. There's a lot of ways to get a hold of us. You can Google us and call us. But um, we hope this was uh, helpful to you and um, hope you all have a great day. Thanks. Okay, this is a follow-up to the Mac OS uh, Catalina reload we just did. I thought I would do one more uh, short video. We talked about doing um, Migration Assistant, but I said we can always do that later. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do that now and I thought, well, while I'm doing it, I'll go ahead and uh, tape it and show you guys. So this is the original hard drive, if you remember, that came out of that Mac. This is an adapter, USB to SATA. And what we'll do is we connect these two together and then we'll plug this into the back of the Mac and we're gonna run Migration Assistant and we can transfer the user's data back. Now this is real helpful because the Mac that I worked on had the original user account, all their documents, all their settings, everything. And now it's brand new, it doesn't have any of that stuff. So if we use Migration Assistant, the nice thing about Apple is it will bring everything back exactly the way it is onto this new solid state drive. 
So um, we're gonna take this, we're gonna plug it into the Mac, and we're gonna do migration assistant. Okay, we're gonna turn the Mac around here and take our adapter and plug it in down here. And let's see what happens. Okay, now that we've got the original hard drive connected back to the iMac with the USB adapter, and we've got the new solid state installed in the computer with the uh, fresh copy of the operating system, we're gonna run a program called Migration Assistant, which will uh, duplicate everything that was on the hard drive to this new solid state. So the way we do it is, um, as we already talked about, we plug up the original hard drive to the Mac. If we come up to go and come down to uh, utilities, we find Migration Assistant right there. So if we just double click it, that will start the Migration uh, Assistant program. Okay, now, let me zoom in here a little bit. We're gonna hit continue. And of course we have to put in the uh, admin password. So uh, if you remember from the previous video, I set it up as password, P-A-S-S-W-O-R-D. Click OK. And that will go to the next screen. Now what it's gonna do is, it's gonna scan for additional drives that are connected. Of course, in this case, it's the uh, hard drive we just plugged up. And then it will ask us to um, transfer the data. So here we are, the main Mac, uh, or the, sorry, the migration assistant screen. Now you remember from the installation, this is what came up and we originally said, um, no, don't transfer the data. But this time we're gonna leave it with option one that says transfer from a Mac, time machine, or backup startup disk. So leave that checked, hit continue. Wow, this is real. This is run. I'm really liking my background groove and music. Um, anyway, uh, what it did here was it found a Mac Pro. This is not what we want to transfer data from, but what it does is it it scans the network. And I have a Mac Pro tower on my network, so it found that it's called Grieg. Um, we don't want to transfer data from there, so we're just going to wait a second until it finds um, the other drives. I'm going to pause the video and come back once it finds the drive we want to transfer from and then we'll continue from there. Okay, so it came back and it found um, two drives so far. Um, as we said, it found the uh, Mac Pro that's on my network, which we don't want. And then it found this hard drive right here, the Macintosh HD, which is what we do want. That's the original hard drive uh, before we installed the solid state. Now, interestingly enough, normally the USB icon is yellow when you plug in an external drive to Mac and this one, uh, came up looking um, like a regular hard drive inside the system, but it's smart enough to know that this is a um, drive that we can transfer data from. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on that and click continue. All right, so it came up and says enter password to unlock this disk. That's because it's the original disk that was in here and it has a password. So the user gave me that password way back when before we started. So I put that in and click unlock and we'll see what happens. Okay, after a few minutes of spinning and looking and scanning the drive, it came back with this. Uh, it wants to know whether we wanna transfer applications, documents and data and computer network settings. I wanna do all of those. Um, as a side note, if you only wanted to do some of the documents, you could click edit right here and just pick what you want to transfer. If you only want to do some of the applications, you can uncheck this. If you don't want to transfer any of the computer network settings, you can uncheck this. However, keep in mind, what we're trying to do is make this as close as it was prior to us uh, doing the clean reload of Mac OS on the new solid state. So I'm just going to leave that there. Check. I'm going to click continue. And it says start. this actually takes this could take a few hours to transfer everything. Um, the good thing about doing this, like I mentioned before, is that you get an exact clone of the way the system was before onto the new drive. Um, but what can happen is if the reason I mean the reason we put the solid state in was because we thought maybe the hard drive was failing. So in the back of my mind, I'm always thinking we might not be able to do migration assistant. Um, because the drive's failing. So what we would have to do then instead would be to manually transfer the data by dragging the folders. And if that's the case, um, I'll shift gears and I'll show you how to do that. Or we also have, which I did not show you down here, we have an external hard drive 
and I believe the client was using a uh, time machine to back up her computer. So as long as that is working, we could also repeat the migration assistant and point it to time machine. So let's just be patient, see what happens, and I'm gonna pause the video and I'll be back in just a little bit. Okay, so using the migration assistant, I was trying to restore from the original hard drive. It looks like the hard drive is bad and it's not gonna read from it. So I plugged in the user's time machine, the external hard drive, and I rescanned for drives and now it found um, iMac 2 on the left. And again, the one on the right that says Grieg is my, is my Mac Pro server, and we don't want to restore from there. But the iMac here that I'm working on is on the same network. That's why it sees it. Um, anyway, let's go ahead and select this. This is the time machine, and click Continue. And what it'll do is uh, it finds the person's name. We highlight it, and we click Next. And now what it does is it prepares the source. So it'll scan the time machine backup and it'll find all the documents pictures music all the settings and it'll clone the original uh, drive to um, this Mac so for I'm just gonna let that run and I'll check back with it in a few minutes okay after a couple of minutes scanning the drive it came back and it found uh, the applications the username and other files and folders and computer networking settings this is good user all checked we want to restore these back to this system and we're going to click continue um, okay, so let me put the password in for each one of these users. Okay, there's two users on this system, um, and I have to set the password for both because I want to make a clone of the original drive onto this drive. Um, so right here I click set password, entered the password, it went to a green dot, and down here where it said set password I selected that, entered the password, and it went to a green dot. So now I'm ready to do a complete restore from Time Machine, the Time Machine backup, to this system. We're going to click continue. Uh, oh, one more authorization. I have to authorize this person. I'm actually logged in as the owner, but once this is done, it's going to come back as the original user ID. So let me go ahead and authorize um, this. So I'm going to enter that password of password that we set up a long time ago when we first installed the system. And that authorizes, and now that went to a green dot. And we can click continue. And there it goes. So it's going to transfer the information. It's going to take the entire Time Machine backup and put it back on this machine. And if all goes successful, once we reboot this Mac, it'll look just like it did before we upgraded the solid state. Okay, checking back in with our migration assistant on this iMac. It's literally been a couple of hours, and we see that um, we're maybe two thirds of the way there. So um, as you can see, this can take a while, but if we're patient, the end result is uh, wonderful where it's an exact clone of the original uh, drive so we'll check back in in a little bit all right finally checking back in on this migration and it looks like it's complete so let's click we'll click quit and what will happen now is the system will reboot oh look at that it came back exactly the way it was on the hard drive so that's the beauty of migration assistant uh, it's also the beauty of Time Machine.